The Genomics Virtual Lab is a project to build bioinformatics resources using the Australian Nectar Research Cloud. In this tutorial, I will show you how to use Genomics Virtual Lab tools to launch your own instance of the popular Galaxy Bioinformatics platform on the Research Cloud. First, you'll need to get your Research Cloud login credentials. To do this, you'll need to be a researcher at an organisation which subscribes to the Australian Access Federation. This includes most Australian universities and major research institutions, but if you're not at one of these places, contact GVL on the email address in the description and we'll try to help you. To access your Research Cloud credentials, go to dashboard.rc.nectar.org.au, just click on the link below, and you'll see a window something like this. When you get that, click on the Login button. If this is the first time you've connected to the Research Cloud, you'll have an extra step here which is to confirm the organisation you work at. Once you've selected the right one, check the option to remember that permanently, and then you'll be able to skip this step next time. You'll then be taken to your institution sign-in page. As you can see, I'm at the University of Queensland, but other places will have more or less similar login pages. Generally, your username and password will be the same as you use to connect to anything else in your organisation's network. But if you're not sure, there will probably be a link on the page like this one, which will help you find out what details to use. Then just type them in the boxes given, click sign in, and a moment later you'll be taken to the Nectar Cloud Dashboard page. The home page of the dashboard gives an overview of your Nectar allocation. Unless you've applied for an extra allocation, you have an allowance of two CPUs, or virtual CPUs, which are the equivalent on a cloud computing system, and eight gigabytes of RAM. And as long as you've not used Nectar before, or at least don't have anything running at the moment, you'll see that the circle graphs show that you're not using any of that allocation at the moment. As I mentioned, the first thing we want to do is get our cloud credentials. To do this, click on the Access and Security tab on the menu, and then on the API Access tab at the top of the screen. Don't worry if your security groups and API endpoint lists look a little bit different to mine. What we're after is the Download EC2 Credentials link at the top right. Click on this and it will download a zip file to your computer. On most computers you can just double click on this file to expand it and this will give you a folder with four files in it. The one that we're interested in is the one called ec2rc.sh. Right click on this and open it with any text viewing application. I'm using a program called Text Wrangler, but WordPad on Windows and Text Edit on Mac will both work. You don't need to worry about most of the content of the file, we just need the two lines near the top starting export EC2 access key and export EC2 secret key. I've blurred mine out here for security, but as you'll see when you try it, they are just a long string of letters and numbers. Unfortunately, you can't change these to anything more memorable, so you'll probably want to save this file somewhere so that you can use it again next time you want to log into Nectar. So now we've got all the information we need to start up a Galaxy instance, we'll go back to our web browser and open up the launch page at launch.genome.edu.au. First, we'll need to select the Nectar OpenStack Cloud. Next, copy the access key and secret key values from the ec2rc.sh file and paste them into the relevant boxes in the launch form. Then you'll need to give your cluster a name. Unless you've got an extra Nectar allocation, you won't be recreating existing clusters, so select Create a new cluster and pick a name. I'm going to call mine GVL Galaxy Test for today. You now need to choose a password. This could be more or less anything that you like, but you will need it again in a moment, so make sure that you remember it. Finally, we need to pick an instance type. Because the standard allocation is only two vCPUs, the only options which will work are the small and medium instances. Since I've got two CPUs available, I'm going to use them both and launch a medium instance. Once you've selected all of these, just click on the Start an Instance button and wait. The options boxes will go grey, and a few seconds later the screen will change to show the launch monitor. The launch process normally takes about one and a half to five minutes, and you don't need to do anything in that time, but to see what's going on behind the scenes, we can switch back to the Nectar dashboard. If we look at the overview page, we can see that where before there were no CPUs or memory in use, we're now using both our CPUs and all of our 8GB of memory, which if you'll remember was the size of the medium instance that we launched. Switching to the Instances tab, we can see our new instance in the list. We can also see that it's running GVL 2.09, which is the latest GVL release, that it's running in the Monash zone, although yours may launch somewhere else, that doesn't really matter, and it's been assigned an IP address, which we can use to connect later when the launch process has finished. 
Switching back to the launch monitor, I've edited out some of the waiting, but after a while the display changes to show you that your new virtual server is ready to use. Because we now want to start up Galaxy, we're going to start the Cloudman console, which we do by just clicking on the link in the public IP line of the table. The username here is admin, and the password is whatever you chose when you filled in the launch details earlier. Logging in will then take you to the Cloudman setup page. We're using the standard Nectar allocation, which means that we don't have volume storage, so we need to select the transient storage option. This gives us 60 gigabytes of space to load data to our Galaxy instance, but that data won't be saved if we shut down the instance. If you want to be able to stop and start your instance without losing data, you need to apply for, to Nectar for a volume allocation, which you can do through the dashboard page. For the moment though, just select Transient Storage and click on the Choose Platform Type button. Cloudman will then start launching your Galaxy instance. If you click on the little green plus sign, it opens a log window so you can see what's happening during this process. All you really need to do now though, is wait for a few minutes while everything comes online. Once all the services are started up, the Access Galaxy button in the top right will change from grey to black and become an active link. Just click on this and you can access your own Galaxy instance on Nectar with a wide range of tools installed and ready to use. If you want more details about any step of this launch process or information about management, configuration and termination of your Galaxy instance, check out the GVL launch guide at genome.edu.au slash wiki slash get. In the meantime, thanks for watching this tutorial and have fun with your GBL Galaxy instance.